Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second webinar in the series of the Open Organization. Today, we are going to cover how open is your organization. And Carrie, Carrie Carrasco, and I am responsible for the solution specialists and the architects in the Benelux. Before we start, uh, let me give you a guidelines that you have there in front of you two icons. One icon is the Q&A, and that is a place to place any questions you might have, and then we will try to answer those questions at the end of the webinar. There is another one, another icon, is the icon of the chat. Please use the chat for uh, yeah, communication with the participants. And also, you have experienced any issues that um, Ivo is the moderator today, and he will help you with any yeah, questions in that regard. So um, these type of sessions usually are done yeah, uh, uh, in person, and they are workshops. And um, yeah, with these uh, new times, we are going to try a different way. And for that, we are going to use this tool, the tool that I need you to um, uh, to interact and to answer the questions that we will uh, have through the webinar. So please take the mobile, and place the camera in front of the uh, barcode, and that will guide you to the presentation where you will be able to respond to the questions. If you are in front of the computer, please uh, type uh, on the browser polf.com, enter Benelux, Benel468, and that will mean that you are ready to answer the questions. So to start, let's have the first question. This is for testing purposes. And uh, yeah, I would like to ask you, how are you feeling today? Because uh, here I would like to see if we are ready to go before we start and uh, knowing, uh, see, I see some answers there. You see, well, I see that uh, we are saying we are uh, happy or for less happy, it doesn't matter. Just check today is a nice weather, the sun is shining. So let's see if that can help us to become happy. Um, I think here are some answers already. So please check just a few minutes more just to go before we start. And I see that we have one in orange, less happy. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's go. Let's start with the first question. The first question that I have and uh, is, is to know if you have been in the webinar, the first one about understanding the open organization, the reason why I'm asking this is because, uh, yeah, some concepts that we will uh, touch and uh, it's for me to be aware if you are familiar with those or not. And uh, we have also the webinar on demand in case that you saw it on demand instead of live. And uh, I know is if, yeah, it's the first time that you join us in this type of webinars. I see there are some people. It's the first time they joined today. Let's see if I can cover and at least be clear enough to go through the different options that we will cover. So let's start. Just to introduce and to have some context before we go into the how open is your organization. Thank you very much for the answers. I see 31% is the first time who has joined. Let's start with the context. What we cover in the first webinar it was that Harvard Business Review um, create, yeah, did an, a survey in, uh, among the 700 business leaders about business transformation and how successful they were with the business transformation. The results were that 13 percent, one three, uh, they were successful. And the question was, why so low? And uh, they were asked, where, yeah, where were the, the, the bottlenecks of, of the barriers that they were finding? And uh, the the highest the highest uh, barrier was culture, and culture actually is the hardest. What is culture? Culture is people, and uh, people is us. So what we uh, cover in the first webinar it was to say that we believe uh, in Red Hat that to tackle that culture aspect, we need to practice openness. And what is openness? Openness is, is a set of characteristics, and they are the basis conditions, conditions that we can apply. What I call practice openness is practice TICA. And what is TICA? TICA is the acronym of uh, T of transparency, I of inclusivity, T of collaboration, T of community, and A of adaptability. 
So today we will cover TICA and how open we are today. How do we experience openness? But this is not only what we think is important, it's also in that review, in that survey, the digital uh, transformation leaders, they were asked um, about these uh, characteristics and this, uh, what you see on the screen as the results of it, where you see that adaptability and collaboration are the highest score. So what we will do today is um, to uh, use a tool and that is the open organization capability model. What we saw in the in the first webinar is that uh, the open organization book from uh, Jim uh, uh, and actually and his ideas, we have an open source community that emerged and this open source community uh, has formalized the, the, the definition of an open organization where this TICA, the five characteristics are very important. This tool, if you see the URL there, uh, please don't forget to add this open or because it's important to get the right tool, otherwise you will get into a different one. It's, it's a tool that we use when we have workshops. And today we have like 30 minutes webinar. And I thought how I can do this in a way that you can get the flavor of it because in 30 minutes we cannot cover the way how the tool is. So what I have done is a micro model. And this micro model is uh, we will we will go through these five characteristics and then you will think uh, about the context the context that i would like to ask instead of thinking about the organization that perhaps that scope is too big i would like that you think about yourself the team that you are working with and also perhaps the few teams that you need to work with when you need to actually to get your things uh, your work uh, done and, and become successful in this in this micro model so please take that context just to to contain a little bit uh, to make it smaller and in this micro model what we will do is to go through the five characteristics and what we are going to do is the following first of all i will introduce the characteristic second of all you are going to see i'm going to give things that you need to think uh, about just to help you in the thinking process and how did you experience that characteristics today and third, then you will use a label and the label would be three levels. And these three levels will be, um, one is initial, the other one is defined, and the third one will be optimizing. But let's start because I think that will help. So I will introduce the, the characteristic. You will think about the way you feel today or what is what you're experiencing today. And that is what we will uh, help us to see how open we are today. So let's start with the first one. Transparency. What is transparency? Transparency, if we look at in the dictionary, it says that yeah, it's to, to see through. So I would like to, to uh, translate this in the, in the to know through. And uh, I would like that you think here about yeah, how transparent are the decisions that they are made. And um, when, when a, a decision is transparent, when it's not made in a vacuum, but it's made in, in, in an open, that means that uh, everybody could participate. And also transparency means um, if, if a decision has been made, do we have the information? And the information is that uh, explain why sometimes information it can be shared of, of not. And the, the important thing is when a decision has been made and you have not been part of it, if you know why. So here, um, if you see the three levels that we have, we have defined for this micro model. Initial is that decisions really, you have a little context or uh, we don't know how we can share of if the information has been shared and why. In the define is when you have sometimes there are some contents and also some information has been shared. Sometimes it's explained why the decision has been made. And in optimizing is indeed that we can, uh, yeah, we know uh, how the, the context, how the decision has uh, been made and also um, uh, the information has been shared or not. You have uh, to think here, for example, in processes like hiring, in processes like like uh, promotions, in processes like planning, or, or for example, management appraisals. 
So please think, don't make it too complex because it's complex enough. Just uh, think a bit just to see and to evaluate where you, do you feel you are today in, in your context of work. So here is what I would like to ask you. And while you are thinking and answering, uh, I would like to share with you why do I find transparency so important? And it's because, uh, yeah, originally uh, I was born in a country and at that time the environment was an environment full of, yeah, it was a dictatorship. That means that it's a lack of freedom and definitely a lack of transparency. And at that time, yeah, uh, many situations and, and, and circumstances and uh, the way that I felt is I promised to myself that I don't want people that work with me to feel that way. So what we did in our team, for example, that was the personal note, but in the team, we took the tool that we have online and we said, let's go through this because we are in, in the team, we are in Red Hat and we believe we are transparent and me as well. Yeah. And, and then um, uh, what we discovered and actually one of the, the, the team members told me that um, Sometimes I'm not that transparent because some decisions are made. Uh, in this case, a concrete example was a promotion from a uh, team member from one role to another. And this decision was made in a vacuum. And, 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 and that was it. So that was my mistake. What was my mistake? Sometimes decisions are made. Sometimes you get decisions from above. But what is important is to be able to explain why. And if we don't explain why, then we are not doing that correct. Thank you very much. I see we are in define, so actually we are doing uh, better than I expected, and that is good to know. So let's go to the next one. Inclusivity. What is inclusivity? Inclusivity is what allows you and, and what encourages people to feel connected. And I would like to say here, please don't confuse inclusivity with diversity, because uh, inclusivity, you need to have an environment, an inclusive environment, and that can become then diverse. Inclusivity is not about that, that people are happy. It's about that people are comfortable. And that is very different. So here you need to think also in two, two main uh, aspects that I have uh, selected for this micro model. And um, we have, uh, do, do you feel that there are channels so where we can provide feedback, that we are asked to provide feedback? Of do you feel that the leaders are making decisions without any 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 inclusion? Then you have the the levels that we have defined here. We have initial in defining is that you feel that there are some channels to provide feedback and some leaders are asking for input. And optimizing is when people are feeling safe and actually you provide and receive feedback in a safe manner. And also there are clear, clear uh, guidelines and channels to be able to get all these different uh, um, diverse points of view. So if you take into consideration here inclusivity, here think about where, how do you experience this today? In my case, uh, inclusivity, if, if I tell you my experience uh, at the beginning of my career, I was a programmer, I was a Java programmer. And in this Java uh, programming time, I was at the beginning, I was learning. So I was in a, in a team with experts and we were defining, well, we will have to develop intelligent agents. So these are very yeah, mathematical uh, algorithms. And uh, actually, I, I didn't feel inclusive. They, I was also in a different country. That means there was a little bit of, of, of language barrier. And I think that has also impact, but they didn't take into consideration my input. And sometimes when I have the, pro the, the chance to talk, uh, they were not listening to me. I mean, they didn't bother much. And the way I felt, I felt so uncomfortable that I really didn't want to be there. Or at least that's the way I felt. When we were doing the, the tool within the team, what we found out is that sometimes we are not that inclusive. And one of our colleagues told us, that uh, the example is that uh, when we have meetings and we need to make decisions, sometimes in architectural decisions of any other discussion, he's more reserved. And uh, he felt that in the meetings, the people who are more outspoken are the ones that they get most of the time to talk. And that's correct, if you think about it. 
And sometimes even these this, this colleagues, they get the time to talk. And then in the middle of their um, expose of ideas, they get interrupted. So the conclusion is that at the end, the people who are more outspoken, they get even more time to talk than the others. So this is really food for thought. And we need to be very uh, uh, aware in the meetings to be able to give the, 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 the chance to everybody to, to talk and to express their ideas. Because this way, otherwise we are missing um, probably good input for the right decision. So thank you very much for this. I was expecting more in the optimizing, but indeed sometimes we forget this part of the inclusivity. There are reasons for that. There is no time, you know, everything has to be done really fast. So let's go to the next one. Collaboration, very important one nowadays, because uh, what is collaboration? Collaboration is that when we talk about that, we, we, we need to, well, we are working together. But working together is, 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 is a process. Eh? It's a process of, of sharing a goal where we will work together. But what is key here is that sharing this goal, this goal has been negotiated all together. And how well we do that negotiation is how well we will do collaboration. So here we can think about uh, these uh, uh, cross-functional teams because we need to work with different uh, um, colleagues from different departments, sometimes from different partners. And uh, what I would like that you think about here is sometimes how often do we say, yeah, uh, we don't have time, you know, uh, it's, it's, if we try to, to work together with that thing that is more trouble than it's worth. So if you have here the three different levels, you have initial, in define, in define is when people in a proactive manner is looking for opportunity to collaborate because we believe that that will bring better results. And optimizing is really in the DNA that we really, really see that people collaborate because see the benefits for all of us. So here in collaboration, if you think about it, you have here I think one of the, we think we collaborate, but do we? When we were doing this, for example, in this project, what we have, I have done different projects, but I want to, to talk the ones that they are very positive because, um, you know, I have been lucky enough to be several times in what they call the dream team. And the dream team, they were composed of different, for different projects. And we were people from different, not, not only different things from the, the, the same company, but we were also teams from different companies. And why we were doing so well, it was because the collaboration was so good. And why the collaboration was good? Not because management told us, now you work together and you need to collaborate. It's because the team itself, we discussed together how, what to expect from each other. We want to be successful, we want to deliver on time, and we want to uh, deliver a great project. And everything was defined all together. When we had challenges, we came back again to the table. We discussed what we were uh, facing and together we find the solutions. It sounds simple, but this is not as simple as it sounds. And we just see that in uh, everyday uh, work. When we were doing this, this evaluation of our team, we found out that, uh, yeah, we, Work together, yes, but the collabor collaboration bit is we expect too many things from each other, but actually we have not discussed that. We assume too much here, and, and that is where things can go wrong. So please think about it, and has, has, have we done a good negotiation, what to expect from each other to make sure that we get the business result that we are looking for. So thank you very much. I see we're expecting define, so do, do we are doing a thing better than we expect it, and that is uh, good news. So we go to the next one, community. Probably this one is the one that you are also most familiar with, because uh, community is, is, yeah, is a social network of people who share the same goals or share the same beliefs. And uh, usually what we have in, in, in all the companies, when we have a specific subject of domain, and we want to share best practices, or we want to have this group that we can meet to discuss challenges so that we can help each other in how we can find the best solutions. So here, 
um, if we have these three levels that we have initial defined and optimizing, is how this community is formalized. So initial is that there is not an, uh, an alignment and uh, there is not a common language. In define is when, yes, we do share the values, we are part of this community, and we reference very often to these principles that we have uh, actually defined together. And in optimizing is really the formalization of a community. There, uh, you can think about the open source communities that they are very well formalized. If you think about this, what is what you think, how far you are today when you think about this, this group of people that they are working together, or at least uh, in, they have a specific subject where they are interested to uh, develop together. In Red Hat, we have also internal communities, and they are called the community of practices. And I am uh, um, particularly, uh, yeah, I, I belong to one of them. It's called the community of practice of open source uh, office. And here is when you can, depending on the time that you have, on your commitment that you can that you can give, uh, you can have the you know different roles. You can be a contributor, you can be just a member, you can lead the community. The key of the communities is how you keep the communities alive, because that is the most difficult one. So thank you very much. Yes, that is what I was expecting actually in the define optimizing. I understand that formalization always is uh, that uh, the part that is also taking time. And sometimes we don't take the time for this. So I hope you are hanging there. I think we are almost, almost there. Let's take the next one. Adaptability. What is adaptability? Adaptability is, is the, how, how is the ability for us to adjust to new circumstances? And here, um, I would like that you think about, um, do we share information? at early stages of um, the other uh, the other area we need to think is about failure how is failure taking that into the company it's really a blame so if we have here initial defining and optimizing in define is that we share materials and, and and failure is more seen as an opportunity and in optimizing there is when we share materials in a broad manner and failure is more like an outcome of experimentation. It's here, I think, just to be concrete, we make a plan, think about the general you know, project plan. Do we share the project plan as soon as possible so that we can get input to adjust the plan in a good way to get better results? Or we share these plans almost at the end where then we are not that open to adapt. We call it uh, in Red Hat uh, release early and release often. And this is not only for software. This is for any, any, any plan of any initiative that you might have. So if we check our assessment in adaptability, and here uh, I would like to, to share this. Uh, uh, nowadays is very important because, yeah, we are this uh, Corbit uh, 19. And uh, if I uh, explain, we have our plan for this year, how we want to go out together. So everything was we creating, getting input from, from the team and uh, we were happy with our plan. However, at one point we came into this uh, yeah, Corbett uh, situation and definitely the plan that we had, it was not good anymore. We need to adapt and we need to adapt as, as quickly as possible. And how, how adaptable are we? Because that is what the times, things are changing so fast that that is what we require to have now. This is not being asked by a group of people. This is asked by every single individual. And how good, how comfortable we are with this, with these changes. This is, this is an important one uh, that actually is taking into the agile methodologies because we, plan for the unknown and therefore you need to have this uh, release early, the release often and adapting as we go to get at the end the outcome that we are looking for. So thank you very much for the for the uh, all the, the I see here the initial define optimizing. Well actually here we are seeing uh, I see that uh, more uh, yeah uh, positive than uh, than I expected in optimizing. 
And uh, now that we have covered these five characteristics, this is where we are today or where you feel you are today. This is the exercise that you could do exactly the same, is where you would like to be. But we cannot cover that uh, today. This is, that's why this is called the micro model. But we feel, actually, we, we see barriers when we work or we want to work with this, this openness. And which, which are those barriers that we face? Here are an, uh, listed a number of, of barriers that uh, we have collected from uh, different sessions. If you see that you miss the one that you are uh, facing, please, uh, could you share in the chat so then I can add it to the list? But uh, let's take a few. For example, too much bureaucracy. Sometimes there are processes, uh, things are too slow, and yeah, we cannot go as fast as we would like to. Sometimes we have also stuck in middle management. Um, in the case that uh, middle management stays doing things the old fashioned way. Or we have people are territorial. You, have you been in these situations where people are very possessive? And possessive, um, I was in this, and, and, and sometimes there are reasons behind that. You have people that they have created an application of a system and they, they started from scratch in time. It has become an, an, an critical for the business and they feel this is their baby. So it's very difficult to get it, uh, yeah, to, to, to get it, uh, yeah, to let it go. Eh? And also we have lack of trust. People don't feel comfortable sharing information because they believe that they might be a misuse of, of their counterproductive, uh, of want to control. Want to control is that a very, very sometimes much in, 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 in the management layer that we feel that we need to control what is going on. Otherwise, um, we feel that we are not doing the, the right uh, job. There are these uh, other aspects, like sometimes also explicit commands to tell people how to do things. That is uh, not uh, the, the, the new way of doing things. So if you check all of this, the barriers that you face today, can you please choose only one? Because I think in where you are today, which of this is the one that is stopping you to move and to be more open? And it's not always, when I say you, I'm talking about the context that we are covering here is you with your team and the interaction with other teams. What I was um, saying here, now you are telling me here this uh, 25%. I was, I was expecting like lack of trust because in the first webinar we were saying we are looking to have more tra transparency and it's very related. Uh, want to control. Let me um, make a comment here. We want to control. I was talking in the first webinar about empowering people. And the empowering people is, is about uh, um, giving the confidence to people to take accountability. And you are there for good and for bad. If things go right, it's great. If things go bad, if, if it's a failure, we are there because we need to learn and we need to move forward. So actually here is uh, very interesting to see all the lack of trust, people territorial. I was, I was not expecting that one, but uh, obviously, if, if we think uh, carefully, we have indeed silos and different departments. There are always reasons for that. But what is important is we need to start breaking these barriers. So how do we address this? What we believe in Red Hat to address this is actually with leadership. And we believe that leadership matters. But what is more important is that open leadership matters more. And that is what I would like to cover in the third webinar in June. We will go what is expected from an open leader. Because is we have this, these five characteristics and now as a leader, everybody is expected to be a leader, in this case, an open leader, and that will help us to work on and to address this barrier. So when you see all of this, I would like to share with you, um, this is not only theory. Um, we have an, in Red Hat an, uh, an uh, a strategic advisory board, 
and they told uh, Retat that they would like to see how we can work uh, to, to show to customers and how we can work with the, the technology and the culture because the culture is the new way of thinking and the new way of working and how we could teach them or how we could share how we do this and because of this question uh, the, the Red Hat created the Open Innovation Labs team and the Open Innovation Labs team actually is making this real and it's helping customers so they are um, uh, covering the different areas in the with new with tools with techniques and these tools and techniques and yes in uh, share in the open library and i will share the links with you in the next slide and here is covering different customers there are different customers going through this there are the customers like uh, uh, Bank of Santander in the last uh, months, or uh, customers like um, uh, VNW, and uh, there, are, there are also other customers that we cannot share the names. That they don't need to be the big enterprises. There are also uh, smaller uh, uh, companies that are also um, working uh, startups because they want to develop something very quick and quick, and they want to learn not only the technology but also the way of working and the new way of thinking. And this is what is done with the Open Innovation Labs. Another, another source that I would like to share with you, I didn't mention so far, but I would like to share here. So I mentioned the Open Innovation Labs team to go to learn the new way of working. And there you see the Open Practice Library where all the techniques uh, are shared. There is another, uh, the DevOps Culture and Practice Enablement, and that is for a team that wants to learn about the techniques. And it's also the open organization uh, book series. There is one, particularly one, is the workbook. I have it here. You can download. I hope you see that on the screen. And this is an ebook that you can download and you can see there how different companies, they have been tackling these five characteristics. And you have, you have examples like examples from, from Autodesk, uh, you have examples uh, from Microsoft, the Microsoft, uh, the technical content teams, when they were working in how they can improve the collaboration. You have examples from uh, Dell Technologies, when they wanted to create the community to make sure that they could stay with the cutting edge of technology. And not only the example of some customers, but also other companies, how they are doing this. But also you have some, probably, if you want to go into this, there are some activities and suggestions that you could put in place with your teams if you want to put in practice and to become better in, in, in one of these areas. But remember, these areas are interconnected because collaboration, for example, is working very well when the other four characteristics are in place. And this is a, a very important uh, point that, and that is the complexity. They are correlated and therefore sometimes you cannot do one without the other. And in this case, I would like to, um, to stop here and ask you for a feedback. And I have two questions for the feedback. The first one is, what did you like most about this session? And while you are answering this question, then I would like to ask Ivo if we have any questions in the Q&A so that perhaps we could uh, try and to go to answer those. Um, there's basically only one particular question. Uh, if we can share the slides um, next to the recording, obviously, of this session. Definitely. We will share the slides. And what I would like to clarify is that um, what we have been through today is a, what I call the micro model. So please keep in mind that I made up this myself because we could not go through the, the tool that we have online because of the 30 minutes time that we have in the webinar. But still, I really wanted to, to get you to that you get the feeling and, and how this would work for you to get this, this, this flavor and to experience how, uh, how it could be. And um, what, what my, my suggestion is always in this case, if you say, how can I start? I think it's important to pick um, 
one thing, where do you think you can become more open? And, and you say we want to become more open in communication or we want to become more open in participation. So pick one of those and work on that one together with the team to decide how you can become better and more open on that one. Review that, take that for a few months, work with that, and when you see progress, celebrate, obviously, and then go to the next one. Because as I mentioned in the first webinar, we need to do baby steps, and this is the way to, to start with. So thank you very much for the, for the feedback. And now we go also to the second one that I'm particularly interested in, and is about how would you improve this session? Because it was a little bit tricky on trying to do this, this workshop uh, interactive mode. And, and uh, actually, obviously, there are many discussions when you are, you are alive. And I think here, um, what I would like to uh, advise is don't be attached to the tool and don't be attached to this leveling that we have used. It's about the discussion and it's about the, uh, the, the negotiation and the agreement where we can become better. Because there is no right and wrong answer. If you ask me, do I have to be always the highest score? To be the best, not necessarily. It depends on the needs of the team. And it's the same in all these, these discussions. Um, it's, it's the same different teams, they have different needs. And there is where you need to think, you, you cannot have one thing fits all. So there is where I think you, for the different things, you might find that this engagement of Engaging with the uh, Open Innovation Labs thing is, is good because they learn by doing. Um, but perhaps for management executives, they will not go to this. For executives, a different type of training is, is required to learn these open leadership uh, skills. Is there any other questions that we could cover? Thank you very much. Use case, yes, I was thinking about that indeed for the customer use case. Perhaps it's something that's a good idea for a potentially a future seminars that then instead of going through the material that I want to share, then is to take one or two use cases and go through that uh, in, a, in a detail. But please, I recommend also to see this uh, workbook because there you can uh, read different use cases uh, of customers the same as the customers that uh, they have been through the innovation labs. So with this then, if there, if there are any other questions, uh, Ivo, or? No, not no for now? No. Okay. No. So I would like to thank you very much, everybody. And um, I will take into consideration this use case because I think it's important. And definitely, I was struggling between the time and where I could focus on. So um, for the next webinar that is about open leadership, then I will take that feedback for sure. Thank you very much for today, and I wish you a great week. Bye-bye.